It's recording. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the other action item was for Toby to file an issue and a link to a Google Doc with the uh, organizational affiliation stuff. So that's um, that's done. Did I miss I didn't miss any action items from last time? Did I? No, I don't think so. Okay, so so the next um, bit. Uh, sorry, people are typing up in the agenda. Let's let's. Uh, <laughs> I just I just I, I just put it there so I wouldn't forget. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. That's all. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> we, we're working our way through the agenda. I just wanted to put a marker there. Okay, sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop that down into the notes for the for that. Section. Okay. Okay. Oops. Cool. Um, okay, so the org affiliation. So I've included in the minutes, there's a link to the issue that Toby put together and a link to the um, the document. So the, the issue, frankly, just uh, links off to the document. So there's not really much interesting in that bit right now. Um, did anybody... Uh, did anybody contribute to this this document that wants to to talk about it? I'm looking at the issue. I see that I had responded. I <laughs> already forgot about it. Mm -hmm. um, I went through uh, the long list of metrics that we had and added anything that we already had to here at the bottom where it says related metrics listed in mm -hmm. the metrics repository. So the other dimension here that I'm not seeing that I do know is significant is affiliation changing over time of individuals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's a point in time where individuals, you know, you, you take your snapshot in time, but a lot of the projects I work on, um, you know, people will change within the ecosystem. And we certainly have seen this inside Linux. Mm -hmm. um, the Git, DM work that is there already has a notion of um, time windows associated with the organizations and um, standardizing on some of that type of how we track organization affiliation and, and time bounded, I think is something we should be looking at. Being able to capture. People don't just look at metrics at a point in time, they also tend to look at trends and historical. Mm -hmm. So Kate, I'll add that to the to the huge metrics list, and I'll ping you on that one. <laughs> so you can. It's really just about getting the name and kind of the the um, definition sure. slash question associated with it. That's it at the moment. Sure, that's cool. Yeah, uh, I, I would want to make sure that, like I say, Don and I have had discussions on this whole topic. Okay. Uh, for several years now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and I'm an expert there too. So I just want to I sure. would I would say though, Matt, instead of adding it to the list right now, yeah. let's um let's work in this in this doc. Sure. Um, just to keep things in one place so that we're not sure. working on them in in both places. So okay. I added it to the related. Oh, um, here let me just create a new category. I created a new category at the bottom called missing metrics. Um. Yeah, that's yeah, we helpful. Can, we can clean that up. So, so what else is missing? Um, with due respect, as you were talking about this, I remember we have some people working as uh, um, how how it's named, so peer peer review or uh, extreme programming. So, several companies working at the same time, or several developers. Pair programming. Yeah, peer yeah. programming. Um, and pair multiple programming. affiliations. Yeah. Um, specifically, in a case, an example to think about for that one is Linaro, where they yeah. have a Chinese associate, yeah. and so they have their company and the potentially the Linaro affiliation. And so, how does that get counted? Mm. At a point yeah, the is. other the other one is contractors. Ah, work for hire. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, for an open source project, Cloud Foundry is where I've seen this. Yeah, yeah the pair programming. Mm. And then uh, we have found, but this is kind of tricky depending on the day. Uh, so people that are affiliated to certain affiliations, but they want to be affiliated to another one. So 
half yeah. they are uh, actually being paid by uh, in Obiteria, but then uh -huh. uh, they want to be tracked as a uh, free silver foundation. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is kind of a limitation perhaps. Yeah, so the question is, I think this dimension here where people should be able to self um, provide input on their affiliations in metrics in some ways and be able to correct it. And that's certainly under GDPR types of issues down the road. <laughs> um, we may need to consider that too. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in here about organizations that are shepherds for the project kind of like at the at the core i know we have the elephant factor but um, organizations that are really responsible for shepherding this project along as defined through a variety of things yeah, I think the case, the case there where that might happen is if a project structures itself so that it puts a copyright into everyone, all, you know, anyone in this contributor's file is effectively having a shared copyright. They may want to be tracking things that way mm -hmm. rather than through an organization, but it, it, it's definitely a spectrum. Um, the other factor I think to put into here is how to handle if an organization changes over time. Uh, mergers, acquisitions. Mm -hmm. So there's a shifting dynamic on that dimension as well. So would um, I guess in in. So she who has lived through being in free uh, Motorola that spun out to have Freescale that then got a, acquired by NXP and then went into a whole bunch. Of, and NXP went into a whole bunch of discussions with Qualcomm. All you had to say was Motorola. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, Kate, if I can ask, what did you mean with the project that structures copyright to share it across contributors? Um, best practices and copyright statements. There's some evolving um, thoughts going on there. And certain projects will um, basically put a copyright statement on each file saying copyright um, contributor to, to this project, you know, project X. And then inside project X, there is a file called contributors. And everyone, you know, as they start contributing, they get added by their peers, something like that. So, so they want, they may want themselves to be formally affiliated with the project rather than the um, companies are coming in from because they're doing this as community work or something like that. But, you know, okay. if we trace them back through their Gmail and they have another account somewhere else, we know they're active. We might affiliate them with a company where they personally want to be affiliated with, as, you know, Daniel says, like FSF as opposed to Patricia. So Okay, that last part makes sense. It seems like, it seems like there are like three axes of control for this information. One, one might be the standard that we want to say is how we decide where whom people are doing the work for. The other might be the developer's preference, and a third might be how a community manager wants to interpret affiliation. Because I think I've understood in conversations, different people see these affiliation things very differently. Like how I would count your affiliation. There is. Or am I overthinking it? Uh, there is even a fourth. If we go for a corner case where uh, we we face. For instance, we've been building some dashboards. Uh, some of the people paying for that were asking us if there are certain organizations that are not uh, uh, asking for certain services or they are not aligned with whatever. Basically, they don't want them to be part of the affiliation. So it's kind of, let's say, a service might be uh, from, uh, from the people paying for, for, mm -hmm. for the dashboard, which is perhaps a fourth case that might be uh, someone, the, the one producing the metrics itself. But I don't know if it makes sense. But. You're talking about like a centralized service that would try to track affiliations across the broad collection of communities? Uh, so not exactly. So the, the, the specific case was if you are not paying for the services that we are offering, 
you will not be listed as a, as a ah. contributor organization here. See. Um, but this is this is basically a way of proceeding by the one producing the dashboard, right, or, or controlling the dashboard. So, I mean, from a pure metrics perspective, maybe it doesn't make sense. I'm fine, okay. So this is on top of your three. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if we want to, Kate, Don, do you, do you have any thoughts on, like, are these different types of ways of interpreting affiliation? Uh, how do, do we, how do we just want to, what do we want to define, I guess? Yeah. So what, what I've done is I've created a, a section in the organizational affiliation metrics doc called missing metrics. And I've just been listing, listing all of the ones that we've talked about. Um, so I think what we have to do first is probably um, make sure that we have all of the, or as many of the metrics we can possibly think of. And then I think it'll actually be kind of a, um, a bigger exercise to look at some, some focus areas related to organizational affiliation and, and put these into logical groupings. Okay. Because I think, I think what you just said is part of it, but I think it certainly doesn't encompass all of the stuff that we have here on the, for the organizational affiliation metrics. Yeah, I also think that we definitely should make sure we stress that it's an, an organization rather than a company. Yeah. And because I think organizations play are the role here that we want to capture. Companies are just a subset. Mm -hmm. And then companies have multiple sub-branches and things like that too. So I don't know to what extent you want to, you know, wholly owned subsidiaries and secondary subsidiaries and that type of thing. That's a good point. Um, so somebody typed in at the bottom of this list, contributor organizations listing and not as part of affiliation. I don't know what that means. Oh, I think that was what Daniel was, was talking about. Uh, if you don't get listed or your company doesn't get listed if you're not officially a member or paying for the service. That was my attempt to capture what Daniel was saying. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, are we missing, are we missing anything else? So does anybody, I guess this is the point I was trying to bring up earlier, I don't see it captured here, but yeah. um, in academe, a big one is core versus peripheral members. This shows up in academe all the time. Mm -hmm. So does anybody care, and this is that whole shepherding idea that I mean, you can have an organization kind of um, appear as a large contributor over a brief period of time, but they're not really a, a committed member to a project, right? Mm -hmm. So you could have a lot of code being dumped in a short period of time. So the number of commits might be high, um, but they really might just be a peripheral organization that made a, a temporary entry into the core, right? Mm -hmm. So do we care, does anybody care about this? I, this is all over academe about core and peripheral structures. Yeah, I've written a lot of papers using that analysis. Um, and I think, I think it's a question of, so the, the challenge has been open source has been what you're gonna count as core. Because, sure. And if you wanna show that without vetting it first, because the core is usually determined by communication acts. So the people who are most engaged in specific acts of communication often end up defined as being in the core. And usually that's right. Sometimes 
you, you get it, it's not quite right. And there's obviously thresholds that have to be set on a project by project basis. So it's it's less absolute or it's it's more it'll you know, assigning somebody a category automatically will I think people would be interested in that. I think there might be bristling against it too. Can you, um, I'm not familiar with this concept. Can you kind of give me an example of what you mean by quorum peripheral in academia? And, and related to that, are you talking about core and peripheral organizations or core mm -hmm. and peripheral individuals who work individuals. for organizations? Okay. I'm talking about individuals. Okay. So but is I've that seen, even an organizational affiliation well, metric? I've been worked on on the organizational level where they yeah, take uh, Yeah, that it, it, it is a factor if you, well, yeah. All right, let's back up and answer Brian's question. So it, if you imagine just a, a sociogram, have you seen a sociogram, Brian, like social network analysis? Okay, so. Sure. Sure, so it's like a lot of dots and the people who are in the middle are tightly connected and right. you oh, see who they okay. are. And the, the people outside are kind of the periphery. Um, sometimes you have two clusters in a project and the people who go between them are called bridging people. Um, and I can, I can shoot out some examples. No, I, I think I've got it in my head now. Um, does that apply in this situation? Because well, the, I mean, we kind of call those, I mean, so like so if, am I wrong in thinking that this is similar to what we would call a drive-by contribution? Sure, it, it could be. So a peripheral member could make a drive-by contribution. Right. Kind of where temporarily they kind of shoot up the list. So right. my, my flip to that is, would a peripheral person or organization be making continual contributions? It's possible. Okay, because yeah. that obviously is different from what I'm thinking. Okay. Yep. So it's really, and you can, like Sean was saying, you can kind of slice this a variety of ways Yeah. in terms of how you would define a core member. I mean, it might be things like trying to identify if one organization kind of occupies all maintainer slots in a project. Right. And they are responsible for approving all pull requests, say. But they take a position of core. I, so it could be defined in a variety of different ways. I just Yeah, and I could see this being useful because at first I'm sort of like, why? Why? Because like if we're talking about like private organizations like a company, the, the dividing line's pretty easy. Either you get a paycheck or you don't. Mm -hmm. So that, that definition's pretty easy. But I could also see an intra-organizational analysis. Mm -hmm. Are most of the people contributing to this project from a certain team? Mm -hmm. Or are there people from the outside who have been chipping in as well? So yeah, yeah I can see where it could lay both ways. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so I sort of summarized this as roles slash network structures relative to organizations, uh, in parentheses, core slash periphery, maintainers and other leaders centralized in certain orgs. In, in the same way that we have this, so uh, you remember this onion analysis of the open source communities where we have that most of the people, no, small amount of the people are doing most of the work. So we can basically characterize organizations in the same way. So probably a small amount of organizations are doing a big amount of the work. So we can have this core really similar to this, but mm -hmm. just characterizing organizations by the activity in the several data sources. And this is another thing. So we are talking about well, I've, I've only seen, I'm sorry, this is my first meeting, so perhaps you already discussed about this, but uh, we are talking about commits uh, around the, uh, the document, but there are, of course, any a lot of data sources and different data sources. So, um, On top of this, I have a couple of extra ideas that I, I don't know if they apply here. So, uh, is, it, is it related to organizational affiliation? Uh, it is. Okay. But uh, you'll say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, so this is the, the the use case is this one: Are uh, organizations being fair in the code review? So is the code review fair across the the several organizations? Because there are organizations that are probably leading this, and they are they are the ones that have uh, maintainers or code reviewers, and the code reviewers are the ones that are adding the functionality at the very end. So. What do you think? Is something that we can have here? In the um, 
I'm adding a section called bigger things to think about okay. um, up towards the top because I think in some of these, um, I think we maybe need to better, we need, we need to figure out how we want to distinguish between metrics um, that are describing organizational affiliation mm -hmm. and metrics that are using that to do something else. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because I think Daniel's like, your, your example is not really it's not really an organizational affiliation metric. You're taking the organizational affiliation metrics and doing some analysis on them. Yeah. And I think we need to decide whether or not those fit in this category or somewhere else, because I think that there are probably a lot of metrics that use organizational affiliation yep. for additional analysis. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess. Um, Code review fairness almost bleeds into the DNI work group as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the notes. I'm just typing this in here. And then another, another similar concept related to this would be the uh, footprint or the influence, but uh, it's probably something based on, once we have the characterization of companies, then we can go for, for something else. I'm adding this here. Um, yeah, that's a good point. I think it does fit into kind of that same category. So I summarize this as which metrics are directly related to organizational affiliation versus other metrics that use organizational affiliation for additional analysis. Um, and we need to decide where we put these and how we characterize them. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Anything else people can think of that we're missing? It seems like a pretty good first pass. Sure does. Yeah. It's plenty, plenty of stuff to dig in, dig into on this. Um, now, as far as next steps, I do um, have a question, I guess. Oh yeah, go well, ahead. Maybe you're going to answer it in next steps. You had, Probably. um, so it was, it was about focus areas and where they slot in. Yeah, Maybe this so that was actually my, okay. so I think as a next step, it would be nice to have somebody take a first pass at um, putting these in some focus areas. So maybe somebody who's done this for GMB or DNI who wants to take a look at these and see if we can put together some kind of a proposal to so review. I, so on, on this, um, yeah. the, so the, as you well know, I just the, the focus areas it would sound like would be a slightly bit different here, mm -hmm. just in the sense that obviously DNI is the highest level working group with say six or seven focus areas in there, and then obviously mm -hmm. the goals and the questions in there. So would would common be the highest level here, and then a focus area is called organizational affiliate or organizational things. <laughs> whatever the proper name for that focus area <laughs> is, and then metrics within there, or is there a, another layer in there? Um, th that's a really good question. I was, I was thinking of the focus area as being organizational affiliation, but I also think that we somehow need to better organize these metrics within that focus area. Okay. So I'm not sure if we have like subcategories within right. it. Um, because I'm just thinking there are some of these that are really closely related. So um, you have things like, uh, um, you know, for example, mergers and acquisitions. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of kind of related to like, how do you handle subsidiaries of the same organization? They're kind of like, um, you know, how to handle when the organization structure changes. Mm -hmm. So those might, you might think of those kind of, kind of together. And then there's sort of the pair programming, multiple affiliation, contractors, personal preference. So some of the um, um, some of those kind of naturally sort of group together. 
I don't know. I mean, maybe we just want to. Uh... So I, looking at this list, it seems to me like they're all factors when determining affiliation for a contributor. Mm -hmm. These are all things to keep in mind. Yeah. I don't know that there are different focus areas that we have focus areas elsewhere. No, no, no. I would, I would, I would say it's. Factors. Sorry, I would say it's under the affiliation, organizational affiliation focus area. Like that would be the focus area. But I'm just wondering because these, um, because we have so many metrics, do we want to organize them within that focus area? It could be really subtle, just in terms of you know how the focus areas have the tables. Yeah. With the metrics and the questions. It could just be really subtle in terms of some headings on those in the table. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe we don't need to further organize it at all. Yeah, it's a possibility too. And just let people assemble them the way that they would like to assemble them. Yeah. Them being the metrics. Yeah. Do people have a preference? I mean, I don't really, I don't know that I do. My, if, if I had a preference, it would be a single focus area called organizational affiliation. Okay. That houses all metrics without a, without a sub category, at least that first pass. Okay, cool. But that's just me. Yeah. Um, and really the only rationale for that is just keeping it in line with the other working group. That's the biggest, biggest factor for me. I think I spot two different aspects here. One is how do we handle changes over time and the other is how do we handle ambiguity and contributor preference. And then what is that for different like subcategories? All of these concerns for determining uh, affiliation, there's a group that seems to be worried about what if affiliation changes because it gets merged or acquired or people move jobs, whatever. And the other is what if people have more than one affiliation and want to be affiliated with a specific project or company or organization? So this is an, an exercise for you in trying to like determine if there are subcategories. Is that right? What, what are these? I understand what you're saying, but what are these? Two items, changes in affiliation. There are overarching themes across okay. the concerns. Okay. But then we also, so those are just in the missing metrics. We also have the, um, the related metrics up above. So the number of contributing organizations, contributor diversity, um, some of those as well. Mm -hmm. and I think they fall into what you determined above as one determining what affiliation is and the other one using that affiliation in analysis. Mm -hmm. So I think what we have as missing metrics is how do we actually determine affiliation, whereas all the others are how do we use that affiliation once it's determined to analyze the data. Okay. <coughs> Am I the only one who sees that? I mean, I, I can see it. I just, I guess this is to the question of do we need subcategories to me? I do think what we probably want to do since Toby was kind of uh, driving some of this effort and he couldn't make the meeting, I think before we decide what to do. I think maybe we should um, sync back up with, with Toby, let him read the notes or that possibly like possibly watch the, the video and um, see if he has any thoughts too. 
Sounds like a good idea. I'm going to have to drop off right now, but I just did want to see if people thought that geog geographic affiliation was a topic to be included in this common group as well. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I'll it's. Let you guys, I'll let you guys sort of start talking about it now that I sort of you know seagulled in from the thing and off to the other thing. But I did want. To, I, I thought that was something that uh, is probably worth exploring dimensions of and setting up a Google Doc as well. And if there's a yeah. link to uh, an open Google Doc, I'll add in there too. The DNI work group is also tracking geographic diversity. Ah. Okay. Um. From what what's what standpoint? Sorry, I know Kate has to leave. Um, well, let's just table it. Let's just kind oh, yeah. of table it for now. Yeah. So the, the the problem or the interesting issue I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of contributors from Australia, but I know they're coming in from China. They're tunneling in and being able to track them more than just the server that they're primed for, but actually track where they're really affiliated with is the interesting case I've been seeing. Mm -hmm. You see that a lot too with, um, uh, because of the way corporate VPNs work, the Bay Area is way overrepresented yep. you know, data wise. So there's a lot to think about with respect to how we, how we handle geographic metrics. I think more so than the, D, the DNI, hmm. um, looking at it from a diversity standpoint. Okay, now I think I understand where you're going with that. So let's uh, Okay, cool. catch up with you another time. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Okay. Um, so I think I think the action item on the organizational affiliation is uh, for Toby to take a look at the the work that we've done and sync up um, in the next in the next meeting. I think is probably the the action item. Um, okay, so the next bit, um, sorry, who was, who was taking notes? Does somebody want to add the action item for, for Toby? Okay, cool. Um, okay, so thank you so much, Matt, for going through and, um, the, the uh, putting the working groups in there. Sure. I think I think what I'll do. Let me. Oh, I'm using two computers. Let me share my screen for the. Sorry. Let me just find it. Okay, so can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So what I thought we would do is um, have a quick look, a quick, quick look at these million metrics um, and see if there were any, any that we wanted to, to focus on. Um, and is, is geographic in here? Did anybody search for it? I don't it? remember. It doesn't, I can look, but. I think it's not. It, no, it's uh, not. It might be, but we do have in the DNI work group the dimensions of demographics, and geographic should be one of those. We have under contributor demographics is the only mention of location. Yeah, I don't remember seeing it as a metric. It's not a metric. I... Contributor demographics is the metric. Yeah. And then the, de the description includes location. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, the other one that's not in this list um, and is related to uh, geographic affiliation also is um, time zones. Sorry, I was just reading the notes. I don't think we tabled the discussion on geographic affiliation. I think we said that it belonged here because it's different than, sorry, I'm just going to fix the notes. Um, I think it's, like Matt said, we're tracking it as one one thing. Um, uh, okay. Um, people are typing things in the notes that we haven't actually talked about. Um, I was just going to put time zones in because I think that's an element of geographical affiliation. I mean, I don't read, I don't think that's anywhere in there. Yeah, I don't either. I'm going to change the notes to sync with the DNI working group on it. Um, but I don't think geographical. So Somebody typed in location, region, okay. country. Do you want to talk about what you mean, what you meant by that? Yeah, that is one of the dimensions of demographics that the DNI work group has. So we are tracking this information, um, but we have not specified a metric that actually uses this information. Okay. Yeah, because this seems to me like something that's um, important for a lot of things beyond DNI, and so I think it probably belongs in the common working group, and then DNI would use this data as a part of some metric that's related to, you know, diversity of something. How, how I see that. Um, does anybody, this is a pretty big list that we've got, and there are a lot of, a lot of gaps um yeah, and there are a lot of repeats too or at least really similar metrics mm -hmm. when i was going through this list mm. in the meantime I, I i have a question so yeah it's, it's the following uh i i've seen at the very beginning that there is a link to the um, apache maturity model uh, yeah, Apache Maturity Model, Guidelines for Assessing the Maturity of a Project. Um, I don't know if we if we have tried to make kind of a, a list of existing models, because there are, there are several of them. Um, and I don't know if it even makes sense here in, in this discussion, because at, at least uh, I'm aware of, so... Uh, Polarsis maturity model, which is part of the Eclipse Foundation. Mm, there were some R&D projects here in the uh, European Union as well that were dealing with this. Um, so th this concept of quality models or maturity models, do we want to get into them? Or we simply ignore them? I don't know. So you're suggesting like kind of building a maturity model? No. I'm or just identifying what's out there? Yeah, yeah, basically that one. It's okay. kind of a state of the art in terms of, well, these are the, the, the models we have related to open source projects. Um, perhaps we can have some ideas or maybe they are nonsense. So I remember adding this to the list because I was thinking that these maturity models, like the Apache project maturity model, mm -hmm. have metrics built into them to determine the maturity level. So there might be ideas for metrics within these maturity models. Mm -hmm. And I also think where you land on the, the maturity model might be a metric as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm saying this because I've been I was years ago really involved in these models, maturity and quality and so on. So I'm aware of some of them. So at least to have a link of, of them, maybe 
I was looking for some of them, but they didn't they didn't even exist. Yeah, I mean, I see the the Apache maturity model stuff here. Um, is that something that should be in GMD, Sean? The um, the Apache maturity model, I I think it sh so should should's our judgment. I think it's something that naturally would fit in that category. I think if it's yeah, I mean, I think naturally it would fit in that category. I think you could also make the argument um, that maturity might encompass things other than the growth maturity and decline metrics. And so I'd have to actually look at what the what the Apache model includes, which I have not done. Okay. Um, do you, do you or, or someone else from GMD want to just take an action item to have a look at that and see if it belongs in GMD? I will. I will do that right now. I will create a issue in GMD to look at the Apache maturity model. Okay. I actually, cool. I'd actually previously just made a note to look at it myself because it looks interesting as a title. And so to Daniel's question, I think it would be helpful to have a list of maturity models because of chaos is the place where people come to understand project health, then directing them to existing efforts like maturity models is helpful. So I can just, I just pulled it up and there are parts of the maturity model that fit in literally every working group. There's a license and copyright model that would probably fit in risk. Mm -hmm. There's a community model that I think is likely to fall partly in diversity and inclusion, at least. Um, consensus building models, kind of a cultural metric. So there are the Apache maturity model is more than growth maturity and decline, but it does include growth maturity and decline. Um, I would be happy to take this and have the GMD group can, to start work on the parts of it that are logically under growth maturity and decline. Mm -hmm. But I think when it comes to, and I think that's probably, you know, but like, yeah, license and copyrights definitely under risk. Maybe this is a world where one day we'll be able to take these maturity models, like the patch maturity model, map them to our metrics, and then create answers with the push of a button. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Yeah. Um, I would say that I think, so, so this is a bit odd for me because like Apache maturity model is, uh, is that a metric in and of itself or is that a way to categorize metrics? It seems like an odd thing to have on a list of, a list of metrics. Um, I also tend to think that we should probably discussions about things like, like maturity models and things like that are probably a little bit outside of the scope of this group. And maybe something we should be doing kind of on the uh, on the project as a whole. But I also I'll I'll be honest, like with my practical practitioner hat on, I'm not sure that out of this list of things that we have here, that figuring out which models things fit in is maybe I wouldn't say it's the highest priority. No. But I don't know if people other people would agree. I mean, the, if there's some examples on the website, and the Apache Maturity Model has a very narrative kind of report that's mm -hmm. probably pulled from a qualitative analysis of lots of the kinds of metrics that the different working groups produce. Um, so to your question, Don, I think, I think it does fall under the aegis of chaos to think about it, but I don't think it falls clearly into a working group. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I agree with you basically. My perception is that quality models are at the very end um, in a really specific context. So they are perhaps more interested in licensing risk or, or, or a community sustainability. So depending on where you are, you will focus on certain metrics. So mm -hmm. our goal probably would be to focus on those metrics. And then at some point, if someone is willing to build some quality model, perhaps we can, we can have some characterization of those metrics and say, all of these set of metrics here are related to licenses and all of these mm -hmm. are related to communities. So you can build whatever you want with this. So it was more, I wanted to open this box with the, 
with the goal of saying, well, all of these exist. There is a state of, uh, a really massive state of the art in quality models and so on mm -hmm. in open source and software engineering. The point is, first, if we want to go uh, into them, that I guess the answer is we prefer not to enter them. Um, and then at least what we can do is to learn from them several metrics they were using at some point and say, well, they were using these metrics. So that's I have it. A, um, I'll have a thought. So um, I think one of the things that has come out on this uh, as an action item for me is to curate this list a little bit. So, I mean, it was, I think the first thing was just to get that column to the right and that doesn't look like much, but it took a little bit of time. And I think, so now maybe the next thing would be to curate this list and kind of ask out loud whether things like maturity models are actually a metric, right? Um, and then kind of cleaning up the repeats. That's on, on my to-do list. Um, what if we considered maturity models at, and then my second point is, what if we considered maturity models at the, the um, Tuesday weekly call? Not necessarily within a, a particular yeah. group at this point. That makes sense. That's that's where I think that belongs rather than in this group. I mean, I think it's fine for somebody to to go off and, and look at kind of the state of the art and some of the stuff. I just yeah. um, I just see it as kind of out of scope. Um, yeah, and we could consider that at the kind of the project at, at the whole. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The other piece that I see as I as I look down through this as kind of a theme is. Um, licensing so there there are a whole bunch of metrics related to licensing and there are a few others scattered throughout the the document yeah. that um don't seem to be clearly owned by a not at the um, moment by a work group and so if somebody if somebody loves licensing and wanted to dig in that's that's one thing that i i see as a possible possible gap um, that's clear I think that would clearly go over to the risk working group mm -hmm. for sure yeah okay um, so do you want to take the AR to who wants to take the AR to sorry action item AR was an Intel thing um, I followed <laughs> action required um, so who wants to take an action item to take a look at the, the licensing bits and, and figure out how to get those into the appropriate risk working group? We and risk is still a subset of GMD. Is that still? No, true? it's its own working group. Okay. It's slowly getting off the ground. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I, I guess the answer is the risk working group will take that on as an action item. Okay. And who... Who's kind of leading the efforts on the risk? Well, stuff? Kate, Kate's there, and Sean's okay. there, and I'm there. Okay, cool. I just wanted who to talk to if I have questions about it. <laughs> yeah, Kate and Matt and I are. Okay. So we, we should probably get that. Is that on the participate page? I haven't seen that. No, seen just that honestly, question. it's been a lot about just finding time yeah. that we can meet. I mean, it, it's really just starting. Like Okay. Now. We had the, you know, we're trying to engage the, Japan and um, you mentioned it one on one of our calls how difficult that can be on phone calls and so we have some other folks that we're engaging right now as well and I think I think it's going to get some traction after the leadership summit. Cool. Um, another one that I saw that is kind of a kind of a theme is um, like response. So. Uh, like response up. times, like response to issues or response to pull requests and who's doing yeah. response. Yeah, average issue resolution time, average time to respond to a code merge request, average time to first response to an issue, average time of open issues. Um, I think that I think that might might naturally lend itself to kind of a a focus area that I think would be pretty important. It's going to also depend on the nature of the question, too, because I could see that falling into GMD, and I could also see that falling into diversity and inclusion, mm -hmm. because those are three things that might come up in the D&I question. Yeah, I mean, I think that those are, 
these in particular are sort of uh, what I would consider sort of prototypical examples of things that belong in this working group, because I think that you could take these metrics and interpret them in different ways for DNI, for risk, for GMD. Um, so I think they're ones that are probably common across most of the working groups, but I don't see any links to anything. So I don't see anybody mm -mm. who's been kind of, kind of working on that. Then I think the first step would be to, you know, identify which of these metrics was like bug age. I don't know if that's the same as like resolution time. I don't know how we would, uh, how we would decide that, but um, that's another one I see as a, as a possible thing for something to um, someone might want to work on. Is there anybody interested? One, yeah. Bug age seems like one that would fit in growth maturity and decline. Um, okay. If you want, what I can do here is we do have some of these metrics already defined somewhere. <laughs> so I can I can try to look for those definitions and try to produce some small paragraph for each of them. So at least we have all of the time to X. Okay. Somewhere. So Bigger. let's, uh, why don't you create, let's give you the action item to create an issue for it mm -hmm. with a link to a Google Doc where you can start uh, developing that and then we can um, and then we can start collaborating on it okay is that does that work that's kind of what we mm -hmm. did with the other okay yep yep tell me you, you tell me the the process that we are all following so this is this is the process right I open a ticket and then I reference a Google doc yeah well okay so is this about is this about giving details to the metric or is this about adding a new metric mm, so my I idea was Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> so my idea was to add both, basically. Okay, because I, I, I think if, um, I'll put something in here. If, yeah. if you're adding detail to an existing metric, mm -hmm. I, just, I put one here. I mean, this is just uh, for closed issues. But there's a template that we use to provide detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, uh, Sean's going to put together a template for that. But I think the first step is figuring out which, which metrics fit in those. Sure. What do they mean? And mm -hmm. then we can use the template to put, put in the details. But, okay, no problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the first step is to at least f to even figure out which of the metrics in this big list here mm -hmm. fall into that kind of response time. Because there are like, oh, here's another one. Percentile distribution of first response time. Um, mm -hmm. So there are a bunch of them in here that relate to that, that we need to at least figure out what the, the scope of it is. And for the ones that Daniel's already has some definition on, we can start with that and then fit okay. that into the template later. Um, okay. So yeah, that makes sense. Go ahead. Well, before we run out of time, I wanted to pose the question, um, what we can offer people who couldn't make this meeting to participate. Is there something you want to discuss on the mailing list? Is there action items we would like people to pick up issues to address? I would say, I mean, if there are any metrics in this list that haven't been haven't been defined that somebody wants to pick up, or if they want to um, collaborate with us on some of the organizational diversity stuff or once Daniel gets the pull request and or not the pull request the issue and the the doc people can start collaborating on that as well I mean at this point we're just sort of getting organized so it's there aren't any things that are like super tangible like someone could go off and do this um, I think we'll have those soon so once we once we get a little bit organized around the organizational diversity i think we can start sort of farming those out like we have with the dni working group and sort of just give those to people to to start defining once we have the template and everything okay i have another meeting in one minute so i i definitely need to drop well we are at the end of time exactly i'm gonna stop sharing Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.